David, uh, what you doing? Uh, a couple things. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about the Steam Summer Sale. I am making yes. an effort to get through the games that I actually bought. Uh, good. good. Um, I've got a couple games, and then I'll, I've got some board games, too, that I've been doing this of week. Of course. Um, so first thing I want to talk about, I finished a game called uh, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. It was the, the Redux of version. Of this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a uh, first-person uh, puzzle narrative-focused game. Uh, actually, the first thing that it says is like, this is a narrative driven game and it does not hold your hand. And they are not wrong. Uh, because I was like walking around and it, first of all, the game is absolutely gorgeous. Like, just stunning. Like, look. Did this come out on 360? Before? I don't know if it did. Um, I know it came out a couple, uh, 2014, I think is when it came out. And then I played the Redux version, which is updated graphics, no new stuff. It just looks better. I mean, some of the scenes, cause it's, it's again, it's a first person game and it's like walking, it's like a, it's very, um, uh, Lovecraftian, occult, occultist driven, mm-hmm. like, ooh, ancient ones. Uh, and you're trying to find out, you're a, you're playing the character, you're a, um, uh, are you Ethan Carter? No, you're a private detective. Gotcha. Trying to figure out and why you're trying Ethan to, Carter you're trying to figure out the missing child. Um, but the game is, uh, uh, very weird, uh, would be the word I would use, uh, again, cause of the Cthulhu you know, Lovecraftian uh, motif around it. Um, but it's really cool how the puzzles are and it's very jarring and it's, it doesn't have like a lot of jump scares. Um, but it's that moment when you're like, like what, what is going on? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And like, what game would you compare this to? Um, not amnesia, uh, because that has a lot of jump scares, but like, uh, there's parts of games that I would compare it to. Okay. You know, like in, um, half life, not the Half Life Two when you're running across the tops of the the very beginning when you're when something feels like it's chasing you but you never look back and there's probably nothing behind you it's just the music is really enveloping dun, 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 yeah yeah and you're just like gotta go and like the game is meant to you know not make it so you get caught but very um uh, very simple but thought out puzzles um and it's about like putting things in chronological order um like you see little you see kind of into the past that's like this this private detective's ability. And so you're trying to piece together these scenes um, in order so that it'll move the story forward. Um, But the lighting, the music and the setting and the mood is like spot on. If you like that Lovecraftian weird, you know, I think they call them the, the watcher, the watcher, you know, it's like in the, it's like, you know, the people around the town or whatever, like you can't stop him. Like cultists kind of, he's here for, you know, it's just like, whoa like creepo um but i what was actually it, it takes about three to four hours to beat it's not a long game which is nice um and uh so the the game takes place in the this city called red creek valley and it's you know it looks gorgeous it's like it reminds me of uh something in like the pacific northwest big okay. big trees big forest um, but apparently the game is based off of uh some an area in poland so then i went online and i looked at these pictures of like what they actually it looks like the game <laughs> like there's a <laughs> there's awesome. like a huge dam and like this little like uh like where all the pumps are for this dam and this um uh, near this water source and it's it's like spot on, uh, but the voice acting's really good. The music is there's certain games that I can't play at night. This is one of them just because of the music is just like so on point. Um, but it was a lot of fun. The ending is the story's great. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, and it's kind of sad. Like all of you know you know. Do you find Ethan Carter? Uh, well, I'm not gonna give anything away, but of course that's the name okay, of the game. Cool. So played that. Recommend that. I think right now on Steam it's like five bucks it's worth it for three to four hours i like those kind of experiences again i like story driven but um it take it, it took like i said it took me about three to four hours i think it would probably take most people about three hours to beat um i'm an idiot um again <laughs> I, I have this problem where like if i brute force stuff and i shouldn't i should just move on and the yeah. game will figure it out but i'm like no i take out a sheet of paper i start writing stuff down i start you know because i feel like if i'm close i was talking about this as the witness i'm like if i'm close like I'm like I'm not leaving because it'll go away. I feel like it'll just vanish. That's not oh, how your brain works, David. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. The other game that I played is Transistor. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so I beat Transistor this week. Uh, this is from uh, Super Giant Games. Uh, they this is their follow up to Bastion. Bastion. Uh, did you play that? Bastion, yeah. Okay, did you did you beat it or no? No. Um, so Bastion. Um, that was fun, but it wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah, it's an action RPG. Uh, kind of has this like top down like uh, I forget what that's called isometric view where it's like three quarter view. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Very simple, like, mechanics, but then, like, builds on those simple mechanics and interesting and uh, different combinations. This is very similar. I love... The first thing I love about this game, I keep talking about music and games. This nails it. Like, I love... This is, like, jazz mixed with, like, house music mixed with, like, steampunk, like, like uh, sci-fi. It's super cool. Like, the music... And uh, the whole story is about... 
uh, it's kind of weird, but the story is about you played this character, Red, and she she lost her voice. She was a singer. And she, throughout the, the game, there's an actual singer named Ashley Barrett who does the, the vocals, and it's, like, amazing. Like, I don't want to admit this, but I like, like, really awesome house music with, like, lead female vocals over it i'm like that's awesome like i get i get jam <laughs> on that stuff but um the the transistor is the sword that right. she's using and he provides all of the dialogue throughout the game uh, but the same thing like you when you play bastion the character in the game reacts to what you're doing which is super the narrator the narrator reacts to what you're doing in the game in like weird and interesting ways so if like you go the wrong way he's like hey don't go that way and then like you keep going he's like i thought i said don't like it's weird like the game is like you know, paying attention. It's like the Stanley Parable. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. Um, but the the game's really interesting. It's about like uh, kind of this um, outbreak, or not outbreak, it reminds me of the flood from uh, Halo, but this like technology is like taking over the city. Um, and so you're using, you're fighting the technology and what's and your cool. Your sword is what level up. Right? Yeah, kind of. well you, it's it's weird. Like you take like, it seemed like you took like the essence from people, their technological spark or whatever from them to gain power-ups for your character. And so you have like four different attacks, X, Y, B, A. On a, I played on an Xbox controller on the PC. Um, and you have power-ups that you can uh, put in those slots and then you can combine them. And there's like tons of different like combinations. Combos and stuff. Yeah, so like for instance, like I wrote it down here, like uh, one of them was that you can uh, essentially like fire a laser from your sword. So you can hit like people from a distance. But you can combine that with like an area attack. So then when it hits something, it explodes. Think of like an exploding grenade. That's pretty simple. Then you can like, uh, if you want to take that grenade thing off and you want to put this ability that turns good guys to, or bad guys to good guys and start, they start fighting for you for temporarily, you can do that. Or you can do a grenade that does that. So like you can take, they take like, you know, I'm sure there's like 20 or 30 different types of um, uh, attacks or mechanisms and they combine them in very unique and different ways. Um, but the artwork is like, it's all hand drawn, just like Bastion. The small cutscenes are like, they look like something out of an amazing AAA anime like Cowboy nice. Bebop is what I think of, uh, or Bebop Cowboy, I can't remember the name of it, but just super cool. I love them. I love the theming of the game and the music is, I, I already, I downloaded the soundtrack. I'm, I like listen to the soundtrack now. It's just so, so good. It's on sale as we're talking right now, but it'll be off sale after the weekend. But I, I think it's been on my wish list since the game came out. I just, there's so many games. I, you gotta play this. It didn't take me long to beat again. I think maybe three, four hours to beat, um, just so good. The artwork and the music alone. I love that there's there's these games that are out. These like these two types of games. Kind of bite size that provide a unique story, unique artwork. And just the the polish to them is like through the roof. Um and I love Super Giant games are really cool. They focus on a lot of music and a lot of storytelling in their action RPGs, which I think is it's like an old school SNES like Legend of uh what is it? Um not Legend of Zelda, but uh Oh, what Come am I on, thinking? Dude. I'm thinking Legend. No, 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 not Legend of Gaia. Come on, Secret of Mana. Like, oh, okay, yeah, those kind of games where they like provide like Earthbound. Like those kind of games kind of gave like a weird story within yeah, yeah, yeah. it, and like I enjoy those. Those were great. There was one that I pre- played recently that was awesome. But um, the other thing that I'm playing, I played two board games this week. Uh, one you was did? yeah, of course. What? Uh, one of the games that I played is uh, Lords of Waterdeep. I just played it today. I freaking love this game. Uh, it's a... up on the wall. It's up here. It's it's a Dungeons and Dragons game, but it has nothing to do with Dungeons uh, yeah. and Dragons. We talked about this a bunch. Worker, worker placement. Worker placement, which Gerald hates, but this one. I like honestly when we played it. Who it was? You, me, Jordan. Was it was Alyssa playing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was fun. It's it's you know it's, just, it's not my favorite. It's so but. simple. You know, so worker placement is always like put your guy there, get stuff, collect stuff, and then go to another place to turn it in. Like it's it's that simple, but it's just like I don't know why that it's so boiled down and so easy and so much fun. And like when me and Alyssa are playing, we can play so quickly because it's just two player. So it's like boom, 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 boom. It's just it's, and then there's a little bit of take that because you can play cards that kind of screw with the other players, but it's not the focus of the game. Um, I just I don't know I don't know why I love that game so much. It's just so it's like it's like Pokemon Go. It's simple, but it's like this is like boiled down to the perfect essence of what that game or what a worker placement game is. Um, and it's a, you know, when I have so many great games and I'm always like, sometimes Alyssa will be like, let's play a simple game. And I'm like, ah, I kind of done with simple games. Like I want to, I've played those. Like when we're playing, I want to play something a little heavier, but for some reason, this one kind of, um, fits that window really well. I don't know why I enjoy playing it. It's like, um, 
it's like playing Mario. You know, it's like the original NES Mario. Like, it's the most, you know, simple game, but it's just like, I like the, you know, just... I don't know, Lords of Waterdeep is not that simple to me, but I've only played it once or twice, so... Uh, the other game that I played is a game called Revolver. Another, It's a two-player game, so me and Alyssa uh, played it. It's a, <laughs> yeah, Western game. Uh, one part, it's, you get two decks of cards. One per uh, one player is the Outlaws, um, and one player is the Sheriffs or of the... Uh, marshals. The Marshals. Uh, and uh, what you're doing is that you have two different objectives. Uh, obviously... The sheriffs are trying. The other guys, sheriff, right? <laughs> sheriff is trying to kill all of the outlaws, um, and the outlaws have two objectives: either get out of town. So there's like a time thing. You're trying to get you're trying to get to the three fifteen to, you know, some other town or something, or you get rid of all the agents at the Mexican border so you can get out of the get out. So there's kind of two different ways you can win, but uh, each turn you set up like uh, there's there's battlefields. So like there's the bank, and then there's like the the saloon, and then there's like so there's all these cards on the table, and you're trying to move from one spot all the way to the train station, but you have to fight all the way through all these different areas. Um, but the characters the way the game mechanic works is i i go first as the outlaws because i'm always the bad guy in all these games uh and i play cards i can only play three cards to a battlefield and they have like different firepower level and then the 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 sheriff goes second and they have to exceed whatever my firepower is if they can't then the time ticks one over and none of my guys die and that's why you have to exceed it but it's this thing about uh it's that great game of like i want to see what you play before what i play and I, and the other person wants to see what I'm going to play before what they're going to play. Right. Because you get new cards every kind of turn, and you don't want to waste like your really heavy cards unless you have the ability to move people from one battlefield to the other. Because once they're in a battlefield, they're pretty much stuck. They can't if you ex- like. Let's say we're at the bank and we're battling it out, and you play a lot of great cards, and then we we finally get th- I, a couple of my guys die, but we make it out to the saloon or the 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 canyon or whatever. Um, if you've wasted all of your great cards and you have no way to move those sheriffs over, like I'm just gonna breeze through. Gonna I'm gonna to breeze, you. yeah, breeze through the canyon. So it's it's a it's a great game. It's super simple to play. It comes in this awesome tin. A lot of people hate like board game tins, you know, like the actual like metal tins. Why not? I don't know. You can't stack them, I guess, as well. I don't know. Um, but I I can't. When you have a massive bookshelf full of board yeah, games. Yeah, exactly. Just go to IKEA, <laughs> you'll be fine. Um, but the artwork's cool. I love Western themes and games. I you know, I, it, it's just so much fun. And it's two players, so it's quick. It's easy to play. Um, and you can play both sides. Both sides kind of. It's like uh, when we play like Star Wars Rebellion. Each each side has a um, you know benefits and has disadvantages to it. God, we gotta play that again. Yeah, I want to get to that. That's we gotta get to that again. It's just that's the, see that's the thing I was talking about games like Lords of Water Deep. You could probably play that two player, even three player, in like an hour and a half at the most. Like Rebellion, you're Rebellion, there you gotta be like, okay, hours. we gotta set up a day, set yeah. up an afternoon, get snacks. Exactly. Who's gonna need some snacks? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, so that's what I was doing for what you're doing. A uh, couple. Uh, um, oh, I do want to mention one thing before we, before we move on. Um, I got a chance to play on the uh, Tabletopia stream with uh, Paul Saxberg from Roxley Games. I played awesome. Santorini. I'll put a link in the video. Which um, one, Santorini? Uh, that's the one that me and you played. The where monsters. You, no, 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 oh. no. That's that's uh, Nightmarium. Um, Santorini is the one with the island, and you place like the the little towers, and you're trying to get to the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a really abstract. crushed you. You did crush me. I crushed got, you. Spoiler alert! I get crushed by Paul <laughs> Paul Saxford from Roxley. That's surprising. So, you're terrible. Though. I am. See, this is the <laughs> thing. I gotta like, rub it in because, like, you obviously are, you're way better at board games than I am. But the few that I do win, I gotta just rub it in. I think with abstract strategy games, when I say that, it's like a chess like game, right? It's not like a. It, it, that's it's it's a it's a strategy game that's like purely like every move matters. And I think when that happens in board games, I get stuck. Like when every single move matters and there's almost no way to mitigate it. There's no way to win. Like I think when we were playing, you're like, oh, you're going to win. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. And I, I think the problem that I, I enjoy games where it's there's something I could do. There's like a Hail Mary at the last second where it's like, you know, I could lose, but there's like a 1% chance I could win if I do this weird thing. I enjoy that. But anyways, check that out. All right. Let's get to. Oh, go ahead. Just played Overwatch last night, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Like we haven't played in a while because Pokemon Go. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. That game is so fun. Go play with Overwatch. <laughs> we play casual. Casual is way more fun than play than competitive. Because competitive is kind of broken right now. They need to fix it. They have a new hero. News. Yeah, Anna, news. Anna. We talked about it. I thought the, yeah, well, that you was were, the lead. No, no, you, were, you were right. Yeah, it's a sniper that shoots, like, shoots health. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cool. I haven't I haven't played with her because there's again too many well, people. She's only on PTR, so uh so I, I wouldn't know. But um <laughs> was that that was so much fun last night. It was fun. Casual is so much more fun. I, you know the thing I, about that game that and I know it, I'm asking for it to do something that's not gonna do. I don't know, it just sometimes it doesn't feel as uh cooperative when it's like a really focused cooperative game. Like I never you know, it's like those moments when you're in the uh you know what it is that they don't have vehicles. 
when you're in a vehicle in like a first person shooter and your buddy's driving and you're in the you know the well you turret. haven't played ranked yet play ranked you'll definitely get that feeling because you have to be like okay we got time our alts at the same time you know yeah it's definitely more cooperative no, but I like know. people are just too serious like i just like to get super inebriated on friday and saturday nights and just play <laughs> overwatch casual you don't have to, if you don't lose everyone could be torp you know but anyway exactly, exactly. Just, i just haven't played that in a while so, just wanted so overwatch and pokemon anything else new gerald nope. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to our uh, standard review of the week. Uh, this week, we went and saw... Ghostbusters! 